off to a cassette player. And then it opens up, the little, little door opens up, and then there's a cassette that's inside. And mine says 80s mix, but you can have fun with it and do a bunch of different ones. You can switch them out with different colors on them. You could do, you know, different artists that you really like, things that are retro from back then. It'd just be so much fun to play around with it and do things that were nostalgic for you. I hope you guys love this design as much as I do, and don't forget to click subscribe to my future videos as well. So we are going to begin with an overlay of a cover pink acrylic, just something neutral in the background that you don't even see. I bet most of you that watched the little intro clip and you saw what the design looked like, you did not even know what the color of the background is. A lot of times that is kind of my goal is to either have a like drop dead gorgeous background or one that is essentially invisible. And that's kind of the idea here is we want it to just blend right in. So we're going to sculpt that overlay and then file it into shape with our e-file. Now on a little piece of scrap paper, we're going to be drawing out our template. So to draw the template, first draw a rectangle that's about the size you want the bottom to be. And then you need to start drawing in. So first then draw in the shape of the door or the size of the door, the window in the door, and then all the side pieces. So you need a side piece for the side of the door. You need the little one that's going to be next to the door. The other side is a long full length piece. And then there's the ones that are going to go on the top and the bottom. And if I know I've mentioned this before and it is on my to-do list and it seems like it's one of those that people um, have requested for my live classes is to do a template making live class. And I definitely want to do that. And this would have been actually a really great design to do that class for just because there was so much thought that went into making this template because there were just so many different uh, pieces and considerations to make so that the door would open and the little cassette would fit in and it would open the right way and the cassette would fall out and all of those different things. But I do intend to make a template live class. And when I, when I do, it'll be on something similar to this and we'll go through and we'll really talk about it. And if anybody wants that template live class, definitely uh, comment below. It'll move to the top of my list. I know the next live class that is going to be in the month of January is going to be on different types of 40 uh, concepts, but not the template making more on say the hinge that is involved in this design. So there's going to be a 4D, you know, crazy acrylic live class happening this month, but it isn't going to be on templates specifically. So if you want a template live class, like I said, let me know in the comment section below and maybe that can be February's if we get enough of a enough of an enthusiastic ask for it. So we've got to sculpt all of our pieces. So you need a full blue rectangle or whatever color you want your welcome to be. It just seems like blue is kind of the the classic one, um, a full blue rectangle. And then you got to make a top piece and a bottom piece that are the full size. You also have to make a third piece that's that size that's going to be, or, you know, about that size. It's going to be the part that's over the top of the front of the Walkman that isn't part of the door because the door isn't the whole front. It's just like the bottom three fourths. So you don't have, you have that one piece that's stationary on the front of it. And then you have to make another little square that's about the size of the width of that front piece that's, station, that's stationary. And then you have to make a length that's about the size of the door. So like I said, there's a lot that goes into this particular this particular piece. And I'm sure when you watch the rest of the video and you see everything being assembled, the reason and the shapes and the sizes of all these pieces will make more sense if they're being confusing right now and I hope they're not too terribly confusing. To make the door I wanted to have a window in it as Walkmans do so that you could see what it is that's inside the player. So begin with that clear rectangle for the front of the door or I guess it is a rectangle it's almost a square but it is a little bit longer than it is wide and then leave that to set up for just a second. I'm using a uh, it's a 3D monomer from Koopa that is a fast setting monomer. If you're using a traditional monomer or especially like if you're using a low odor monomer, those are going to set up much slower than the one I'm using. And if that's the case, you're going to want to sculpt that clear rectangle and then you're going to want to sculpt something else or work on something else, listen to music, check your email, give it a few minutes to really set up and then come back to it and sculpt the blue frame around the front of the door. Like I said, the one I'm using, or if you're using a fast setting or something like a competition monomer, you'll be fine because it'll set up really, really quickly, almost instantly. But if you're not using something along those lines, then you are definitely going to need to give it just a minute so that you don't blend your blue with your clear. So now we're going to start working on making the base of the Walkman. So this isn't the door, this is like the box of it. So you're going to glue on the long side, you're going to glue on one of the short end pieces, 
and my one my long side is a little bit curved out so it did not want to stick down on there so I'm just going to try to hold that piece hold that piece down a little bit better and then you're going to want to do the little tiny end piece the tiny little square and then the piece that goes across the top all these pieces as you can see they don't fit together 100% perfectly which is a-okay just fine no issues at all what you're going to do after you have them glued together because like I said, they don't fit together perfectly. That glue is just a temporary hold. In fact, you would think that front piece I just put on would be resting on three sides. It's actually only resting on one because the other two sides did not touch it. So after you have all of those done, you're going to want to take more of that beautiful blue acrylic and you're going to go through and fill in all of the gaps, smooth out sides, fix anything that needs it. And when you're going through and you're doing this, be a little bit generous with your acrylic. You don't want this little Walkman to be too delicate where it, you know, it'll break easily, especially if you're going to be playing with it. And I mean, why would you make something cool in 3D and take the time to do this if you aren't going to be playing with it? So make sure that it is going to withstand lots of touching and use and, you know, fun. So you're going to go through and just fill in all of the outside little attachments. After you have all of them done on the outside, you're going to fill in that entire cavity of that part that is covered up on all four sides. So just that very end piece, just fill it in completely with your blue acrylic. Once that's done, take a hand file or an e-file if you are e-file proficient, and you're going to file it into shape so that all those sides are nice and straight and crisp and clean looking. It doesn't take too much, hopefully, if your acrylic was you know, laid down with a decent amount of control. Then taking an e-file, you're going to carve out a little indent on the one side and you're going to glue a piece of wire that's got a bead on it. So this is something, like I said, could potentially be January's live class. Um, I will, I intend to post a little, uh, and maybe I have by now. I do my voiceovers in advance, so. But um, a poll so that you guys can vote on what topic you want this month's live class to be on and it might be hinges I feel like I haven't like I said I haven't posted the poll yet but I feel like hinges is just a really good topic to discuss it's there's a lot that goes into it so now that we have that whole box part made we're going to be making the door so you have the long side of the door and you have the short side of the door so you've got two of the four sides have uh have like an edge on them you're going to secure them all with some more of that blue acrylic. As you can see, they are a little bit longer, especially the short side is a little bit longer than our door is, and that's fine. That's actually better than it being too short. You can always snip it with a manicure scissors or file it with a file. If it's thin enough, it'll snip really easily, easily with a manicure scissors, and that's actually a, a pretty decent route. Once you have all of that door finished, you can file it into shape anywhere it needs it. Then you're going to glue it to the bead. So you have the wire is attached to the box of the Walkman. The bead is attached to the door. Make sure that you don't accidentally glue your bead to your wire, or glue the bead to the box, or glue the wire to the door. You want to make sure that those pieces stay attached to only the parts they're supposed to be attached to. After you have that little hinge glued, then you're going to want to take and you're going to secure the bead to the door with some of the blue acrylic. Then going back to your nail form backing, I decided I wanted another piece on the inside of the door part so that when I slid the cassette in, it had more of a holder. So it wasn't quite so loose. So I'm going to take and sculpt another just little bar piece on that nail form backing and then glue that in to the inside of the Walkman. After that's been glued down, it's not something that's gonna be nearly as um, bonked. So it's not gonna break quite as easily, but still, if you can, if you can open yours enough, then you're going to want to secure it with some more of that blue acrylic. That's a piece that I did not attach earlier because I didn't realize I wanted it, but I would recommend putting that piece on the door before you attach it to your hinge. On the end of your Walkman, you need to have a power button, so you're going to sculpt that with some orange acrylic. And then we're going to glue our piece of thread onto the end of the Walkman. This is for the um, aux input for the headphones. So you're going to just tap I like to dip my end of my piece of thread into some nail glue and then hold that on. If you have too much nail glue, it takes so long to dry that you can never let go of your thread. If you use just the tiniest amount of nail glue possible, then eventually you can let go. And once it's going to hold on enough that you can let go, then you can take and sculpt a little base around of it, around it and onto the into the Walkman with some black acrylic. Now on a large straw, we're going to be sculpting the over the head part of the headphones with white acrylic. 
Walkmans really came in so many different sizes, or not sizes, uh, colors, that you could have so much fun with this and do whatever color combination you wanted. I was really tempted to do a pink one because I saw this really beautiful image of a, it's a pink, like a pearlescent pink Walkman. And I, that was my plan initially. And I thought, you know what? No, I'm going to go classic with this. So I went with more of that um, metallic blue, but it was tempting, I tell you. So now back to our nail form backing, we're going to take and sculpt the actual earpieces of the headphone with the same orange acrylic that we used to sculpt the power button on the Walkman. A nice, really bright color. And I will put the color names of all these colors that I'm using in the description box below. Besides the white acrylic and the cover pink, they're all from Double Dip. So the black and the the blue and the orange are double dips and they're all just so nice to work with. So after we have those, um, those little ear pieces made, you can glue them to the ends of the head part of the headphones, glue one on and then glue the other one on. They're going to be flat on one edge. So after you have them glued on, you're going to want to take some more of your orange acrylic and just bulk them up on the other side, round them out. You don't have to make them too much bigger, but just a little smoother looking. And once you have both sides done with that, then you can go through and you're going to actually attach them to our Walkman. So you're going to want to grab your Walkman that's been sitting to the side. It's actually in my fingers. You can't really see it, but it's in my fingers. And I'm going to grab the other end of the wire and I'm going to glue it to the edge, the, the earpiece area of one of the headphones, one side of the headphones, and then I'll cover the end of the wire, which is a piece of thread with your black acrylic, there's a lot of little tiny pesky steps in this. Um, and then you're going to take that black acrylic and carry it up at the side of the headphones just a little bit because they have the adjustment in them. Um, I always found that really horrible whenever I used headphones that were this style because my head is really fairly small as, and I could never get them to fit right because they were always too big. Like I remember in school when we used them, like computer lab stuff, they always like fell down my face. Um, so then you're going to go through and do the other side, the same thing, the black, you don't have to attach the wire this time, but you do need to add the black circle in the middle and then the black piece for the adjustment on the sides. And then once you have that done, your actual little Walkman is pretty much done with the sculpting. There's really nothing left to add. If you wanted to add more of the buttons or more of the different things on it, you certainly could. I thought that would be overkill, so I opted not to and just kind of keep it more on the simple side. There's so many cool things going on with this that I didn't think anybody would necessarily even notice if there were those extra buttons that were on the end. But if you wanted to, like I said, go for it. That would be one thing you'd want to do before gluing it onto the nail. Otherwise, if you're happy with it so far, glue the box to the nail to start with. I had too much nail glue, so I wiped some off the back of my Walkman. So just hold it on there, and then you're going to take, and I made the choice to wrap the cord around the nail. Oh, first, you're gonna wanna fill it in with some clear acrylic behind so that doesn't go anywhere, which is something that you really shouldn't forget because you try to move the cord around, you may have just yanked that right off. But otherwise, just go ahead and wrap the cord around the nail. And then you're going to hold that in place, kind of figure out where you want to glue the headphones on before you put the nail glue down and then hold that in place until the glue grabs, which hopefully isn't too long. Sometimes it's longer than I hope it is. Once it seems like it's holding on there pretty well, then you can go through and secure it just like you did the Walkman with some of that wonderful clear acrylic. Now switching to an acrylic paint, we're going to be using some white to write Sony across the top of the door. So I started with the N and then I'm going to paint the Y after that. The reason I started in the middle of the word instead of starting at the beginning of the word with the S is because when you're looking at something and you want it to be centered, this doesn't matter at all if you aren't worried about your word being centered. And sometimes that's the case, but if you want it to be centered, my favorite thing to do, and obviously with a four letter word, you don't really have to count how many letters it is, but if it's something longer, then you're going to count how many letters it is. And if it's say seven letters, then you're going to find the fourth letter because that's the one that's going to be in the middle of the word. And you're going to start with that letter and you're going to put that in the middle of your space if you want it to be centered. And then you work from the middle to the end of the word, at least I do. I like to work from the middle to the end of the word and then I go from the middle to the front of the word and I work out from the center. And that makes it so that whatever it is that you're painting, word-wise, is fairly centered. So you saw I did the same thing with Walkman. That's going to be a seven letter word and I'm going to start with the fourth letter, which was the K. Really easy thing to do if you've never done it that way and you're just really good at eyeballing, you know, how to space things so it's in the middle awesome. I wish I had that superpower. Otherwise, if you struggle with that, maybe try doing that if you've never tried it from the center going out. I'm going to apply some gel sealer over the background 
over the black parts of the headphones and over the black parts of the attachment from the headphones to the Walkman and over the window. After I've got all of that stuff, I'm going to just apply some matte top coat over the rest of the Walkman here and there, covering up. Actually, this is a 3D glaze. It's going to give it a satin finish. It's not just flat matte, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of halfway between glossy and matte. It's a nice little, nice little texture. And then once that's done, you can put that part to the side and then you can sculpt your cassette. If you wanted to sculpt it with the rest of the stuff, absolutely. I actually did. I just thought it seemed a little bit better to not be jumping around with the video so much. So we're going to be making the cassette now. Go back to your template that you made and you're going to sculpt it within the area of the door. That way you know it's going to fit in your door once you get to that point. Otherwise, if you just sculpt it without knowing, it may end up being too big and it won't fit or it can be too small and it'll wiggle around in there too much. So if you use, you know, the size of the door that you used on your template, then you have a better idea of how big to make it. On the front of the cassette, you're going to want to paint a label just like so with the label, have fun with the color. Like I said, I was really tempted to make my Walkman pink. So I decided to make the label on the front of my Walkman pink instead. That way we're just looking at it. It still brought a little bit of that pink color in. Plus it just had this really nice brightness so that when it was inside the cassette player, you could see really easily see that there was something inside. If you use something like a blue, you might not even notice that the cassette was in there because otherwise, I mean, it's black and gray and white. It doesn't have much uh, color to it. And so you might not immediately notice or see the cassette inside. So whatever you end up doing for your cassette, use a bright color. And obviously for certain things, it would make more sense to do one color over another. But for me, just for a random 80s mix, we're going to go with pink. I love pink, obviously, if you haven't noticed my channel name. On top of the pink part of the label, you're going to want to write the area that you can write on on the cassette. So we're going to write down that 80s mix on top of there. Otherwise, like I said, you could do whatever you want as far as um, the label goes. Have fun with it. I personally, if I was doing one just for myself, I'd probably write Reba on there. I'm a huge Reba McIntyre fan. So that would probably be my first choice if I was to just pull one out of my hat. Um, and especially since I actually like her older music better, like the stuff from... Um, she's got some from like the late 80s and the 90s. I think that, I don't know, I like it better. I'm an oldies type of person. So anyways, we're going to write the 80s mix on there. Like I said, black paint, tiny little lettering, and then apply some of that 3D glaze on top of that as well. Give it that slight sheen. And then you can have fun with your little cassette player. If you wanted to do a bunch of these cassettes, you just have to make more of them during the exact same process and you can switch them out. And it's just so stinking cute. So I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. I intend to make another, you know, a couple little more retro type designs like this. I just they seem like they're more fun than the modern things. I mean, who wants to see an iPhone on a nail? I, probably somebody does. Doesn't uh, do much for me, though. I hope you guys love this, and I'll see you next time. Bye!